to the model, how do you decide what is and isn't misinformation? How do you decide what is true? You actually have OpenAI's internal factual performance benchmark. There's a lot of cool benchmarks here. Uh, how do you build a benchmark for what is true? What is truth, Sam Alvin? Like math is true. And the origin of COVID is not agreed upon as ground truth. <laughs> Those are the two things. And then there's stuff that's like, certainly not true. Um, but between that first and second milestone, there's a lot of disagreement. And what do you look for? Where can a, not, not even just now, but in the future, where can we as a human civilization look for, look to for truth? What do you know is true? What are you absolutely certain is true? <laughs> I have uh, generally epistemic humility about everything and I'm freaked out by how little I know and understand about the world. So that even that question is terrifying to me. Um, there's a bucket of things that are, have a high degree of truth in this, which is where you put math, a lot of math. Yeah, can't be certain, but it's good enough for like this conversation we can say math is true. Yeah, then, I mean, some, uh, quite a bit of physics. Uh, this historical facts, uh, maybe dates of when a war started. There's a lot of details about military conflict inside inside history. Uh, of course, this, you start to get, you know, um, just read Blitzed, which is this. Oh, I want to read that. Yeah. It's, How was it? It was really good. It's uh, it, it gives a theory of Nazi Germany and Hitler that so much can be described about Hitler and a lot of the upper echelon of Nazi Germany through the excessive use of drugs. And just then, amphetamines, right? Or and and amphetamines, but also other stuff, but it's just, just a lot. And, uh, you know, that's really interesting. It's really compelling. And for some reason, like, whoa, that's really, that would explain a lot. That's somehow really sticky. It's an idea that's sticky. And then you read a lot of criticism of that book later by historians that that's actually, there's a lot of cherry picking going on. And it's actually is using the fact that that's a very sticky explanation. There's something about humans that likes a very simple narrative for to sure. describe everything. For sure, for sure. And, and then- Yeah, too much amphetamines cause the war is like a great, even if not true, simple explanation that feels satisfying and excuses a lot of other probably much darker human truths. Yeah, the the military strategy em, uh, employed, uh, the atrocities, the speeches, uh, the just the way Hitler was as a human being, the way Hitler was as a leader, all of that could be explained through this one little lens. And it's like, well, that's if you say that's true, that's a really compelling truth. So maybe truth is, in one sense, is defined as a thing that is a collective intelligence we kind of all, our brains are sticking to. And we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. A, a bunch of ants get together and like, yeah, this is it. I was gonna say sheep, but there's a connotation to that. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's hard to know what is true. And, and I think the, when constructing a GPT-like model, you have to contend with that. I think a lot of the answers, you know, like if you ask GPT-4, I don't know, just to stick on the same topic, did COVID leak from a lab? Yeah. I expect you would get a reasonable answer. It's a really good answer, yeah. It laid out the, 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 the hypotheses. The, the interesting thing it said, which is refreshing to hear, is there's um, something like there's very little evidence for either hypothesis, direct evidence, which is, imp is important to state. A lot of people kind of, the reason why there's a lot of uh, uncertainty and a lot of debate is because there's not strong physical evidence of either. Heavy circumstantial evidence on either side. And then the other is more like biological, theoretical kind of um, discussion. Uh, and I think the answer, the nuanced answer the GPT provider was actually pretty damn good. And also importantly saying that there is uncertainty, just just the fact that there is uncertainty as a statement was really powerful. Man, remember when like the social media platforms were banning people for saying it was a lab leak? Yeah, that's really humbling. The humbling, the the overreach of power in censorship, but that that you're the more powerful GPT becomes, the more pressure there'll be to censor. We have a different set of challenges faced by the previous generation of companies, which is people talk about 
free speech issues with GPT, but it's not quite the same thing. It's not like this is a computer program that it's allowed to say, and it's also not about the mass spread and the challenges that I think may have made that Twitter and Facebook and others have struggled with so much. So we will have very significant challenges, but they'll be very new and very different. And maybe, yeah, very new, very different is a good way to put it. There could be truths that are harmful in their truth. Um, I don't know. Group differences in IQ. There you go. Scientific work that when spoken might do more harm. And you ask GPT that, should GPT tell you? There's books written on this that are rigorous scientifically, but are very uncomfortable and probably not productive in any sense but maybe are, as people are arguing all kinds of sides of this, and a lot of them have hate in their heart. And so what do you do with that? If there's a large number of people who hate others, but are actually um, citing scientific studies, what do you do with that? What does GPT do with that? What is the priority of GPT to decrease the amount of hate in the world? Is it up to GPT or is it up to us humans? I think we as OpenAI have responsibility for the tools we put out into the world. I think the tools themselves can't have responsibility in the way I understand it. Wow, so you you carry some of that burden For sure. responsibility. All of us, all of us at the company. So there could be harm caused by this tool. And there will to... be harm caused by this tool. Um, there will be harm, there will be tremendous benefits, but you know, tools do wonderful good and real bad. And we will minimize the bad and maximize the good. And you have to carry the the weight of that. 